Welcome to this uh, lecture number 11 of the course computational hydraulics. Uh, we are in module number 2 numerical methods and in this lecture we will be covering unit 7 partial differential equation numerical stability of initial boundary value problem. So, what is the learning objective for this particular unit? At the end of this uh, unit students will be able to analyze the numerical stability of the discretized partial differential equation. Uh, in lecture 10, we have discussed the initial value, uh, initial boundary value problem IVVP in terms of this temporal derivative and two second order spatial derivatives and one uh, sourcing term. In this case, we have discretized the equation and uh, we have utilized three schemes explicit, implicit and crank -tickles. Uh, of all these schemes, uh, we need to define uh, this del x, del y and del t for each scheme. So, depending on the value of del x, del y, del t, whether there will be change in the uh, final result, we need to see that thing from numerical stability. Uh, this is the initial problem definition, initial condition uh, and boundary conditions for the problem uh, with rectangular domain. Now, uh, we have errors. Uh, we can define this discretization error as uh, the difference between analytical solution of the PD, uh, which is the closed form solution and the exact solution of the finite difference equation obtained on hypothetical infinite precision computer. This is involves truncation error, error due to treatment of boundary condition. Now, if we consider the round of error, round of error is numerical solution of that finite difference equation obtained from finite precision computer and exact solution of the finite difference equation obtained on a hypothetical infinite precision computer. So, for any problem if we discretize the equation and if you are solving the equation uh, in finite precision computers, there will be some amount of error involved uh, due to uh, round of error. Uh, we need to uh, see few things. Uh, for this numerical error, every algorithm requires repeated operations that is plus, minus uh, or addition, uh, subtraction, multiplication, division. So, there will be accumulation of round of error and in time stepping algorithm, whatever we have seen our in our lecture number 10, uh, accumulated round of error may magnify or reduce with every step. The error may increase exponentially, it is known as numerical instability. Uh, numerical stability or in instability is a property of the algorithm and discretization or partial differential equation plus uh, boundary conditions. And it does not depend on computer used. We need to check 
our discretization scheme uh, to check the numerical uh, instability for the problem. Stability analysis. Uh, in stability analysis of linear PD, uh, we analyze only one arbitrary Fourier mode. Uh, let us consider that error can be represented in terms of uh, in the form of Fourier series and single arbitrary term can be written as epsilon i j n and a n is the amplitude. Uh, in this case, this omega x and omega y are the wave numbers corresponding to x and y directions respectively and uh, square root of minus 1 is the imaginary number and i and j these are corresponding to uh, x and y directions, these are indices. With this information, uh, we can say that uh, the modulus of this error, if we take modulus of this error, obviously this depends on the amplitude term not on this one because modulus of this term will be obviously 1. So, with this uh, we can simplify the error term, uh, we can write it in the form of phase values uh, phi x uh, var phi x var phi y uh, for x and y directions and this is basically uh, our omega x into del x and var phi y is omega y into del y. Uh, we can define uh, this amplification term, uh, it governs the growth of the Fourier component and in this case uh, we can define von Neumann stability condition. This is modulus of g should be less than equal to 1. If modulus of g is greater than 1, error grows, this is unstable scheme. If we have uh, modulus of g less than 1, error reduces, this is stable scheme. If we have g modulus of g equals to 1, error remains same, this is neutrally stable scheme. Now, we have discretized our initial boundary value problem using explicit scheme, uh, we can write the same thing here. Now, this phi i j n plus 1 or phi i j n, uh, this is obtained from finite precision computer. So, uh, we can write the general variable phi in terms of this phi hat i j n and epsilon i j n, where phi i j n is the numerical solution obtained from finite precision computer and phi hat i j n is the exact discrete solution obtained on hypothetical infrared precision computer and epsilon uh, i j n is the accumulated uh, round of error at level n. With this uh, we can write our discretized governing equation with explicit scheme as we can replace this 
phi i j n with phi i j hat n plus epsilon i j n. So, this is actually our uh, discretized governing equation, but we have discretized our governing equation uh, with assumption that we will get the infinite uh, solution from infinite precision computer. So, we can write uh, our governing equation with this uh, exact discrete solution of uh, phi ha, uh, hat i j n plus 1 phi i j n. So, ideally this should be satisfied this equation number 2. So, if we subtract equation number 2 from 1, then we can get uh, this error equation error equation is similar to our original uh, discretized form, but without sourcing term because there will be no error involved there due to discretization. So, in simplified form we can write it as phi i j uh, uh, epsilon i j n plus 1 and other terms on the right hand side with alpha x alpha y like this. Now, in explicit scheme we can define this epsilon i j n plus 1 as a n plus 1 only change in amplitude, but there is no change in uh, x or mm, y uh, direction index values and for epsilon i j n only change in amplitude uh, epsilon i minus 1 j n uh, change in the index for x. Uh, in this case again change in the index for x change in the index for y change in the index for y with this information uh, we can write our uh, error equation with uh, this simplification like this. This is essentially our amplification term and these are the known things on the right hand side. The growth factor or amplification term can be uh, written like this. Uh, essentially, in our last uh, equation, this is e to the power minus uh, imaginary number into phi y. If we combine these two terms, we will get uh, 2 uh, cos phi y into alpha y. Uh, in this case, if we combine this two uh, related to x, we will get uh, cos of uh, phi, uh, phi x. So, I can just write it here this exponential of minus minus 1 var phi x plus e to the power minus 1 var phi x. This will be 2 cos var phi x. Similarly, for y direction Now, uh, we can simplify 
the right hand side and write it like this. And again uh, for this cos phi uh, var phi y minus 1 we can write it as minus 2 sin square var phi y by 2. So, with this this is our growth term or amplification factor 1 minus 4 alpha y sin square var phi y by 2 minus 4 x sin square var phi x by 2. In this case uh, if you want to check the von Neumann stability condition uh, we have mod of this term here and this should be less than equal to 1 which is uh, minus 1 less than equal to 1 and this is within uh, this limit. Uh, we have two cases uh, or extreme ones where sin phi x by 2 sin uh, var phi y by 2 this, these values are 0 and this means that g equals to 1. The scheme is neutrally stable. However, if we apply this condition that uh, sin var phi uh, x by 2 equals to 1 and var phi 2 uh, uh, var phi y by 2 equals to 1 then comes this g equals to 1 minus 4 alpha x uh, plus alpha y and this is less than equals to half because minus 2 minus 1 this is 1 minus 4 alpha x minus 4 alpha y. If we change sides this will be 4 alpha x plus 4 alpha y less than equals to 2 and from here it is coming alpha x plus alpha y is less than equals to half. So, we can comment on the stability of the scheme here that explicit scheme is conditionally stable. This alpha x alpha y uh, this addition this should be less than equals to half. Interestingly this alpha x is gamma x delta t divided by uh, lambda phi into del x square. So, in this case uh, there is this delta t term and del x, uh, del x square term. Similarly, for del uh, alpha y we have alpha y we have gamma y del t divided by this lambda phi del y square. So, it relates our del t del x del y. So, we cannot uh, specify arbitrary values for del t in case of explicit scheme that should be related to del x. So, that is the condition. Now, if we consider implicit scheme again uh, we can write our uh, main discretized equation in terms of exact discrete value and uh, uh, error term and similarly we can define our exact uh, discrete solution of the finite difference equation in terms of uh, this finite uh, difference equation. Now, if we subtract uh, 5 from 4 obviously, uh, we will be getting error equation here 
and in simplified form uh, we can get uh, this thing. Uh, interestingly, in this case left hand side these values are unknown values, this is known on the right hand side. With this uh, if we expand uh, we can again utilize the information. The only change is due to change in the uh, time index n plus 1, but there is no change in other index values compared to our explicit scheme. With this if we write our error equation, so error equation becomes uh, on the left hand side we have n plus a n plus 1 divided by a n and minus 1 on the left hand uh, right hand side. Again uh, we can combine this term, this term that means related to uh, terms related to y and if we add these two terms we will get 2 uh, cos uh, var phi y and if we combine this x terms we will get uh, 2 alpha x cos uh, var phi x. So, with this if we simplify our error equation then growth factor or amplification factor we can write like this minus 1 divided by minus 1 plus 2 alpha cos uh, var phi y uh, minus 1. So, if we again uh, simplify this uh, cos uh, var phi y minus 1 equals to minus 2 sin square var phi y by 2 and this one as minus 2 sin square var phi x divided by 2. Uh, we can write this growth factor or amplification factor like this where alpha y and alpha x these values are positive values obviously. So, 1 by 1 plus some positive value and sin square that means square of any term will be always positive. So, 1 plus some positive value and on numerator we have only 1. So, obviously this value is always this value is always uh, less than 1 uh, from von Neumann stability condition 1 by 1 plus 4 uh, alpha y sin square var phi by 2. So, with this if we proceed uh, for the two cases sin uh, if sin values are 0 then we have g equals to 1 neutrally stable condition and if we have sin values uh, equal to 1 then we have g equals to 1 by 1 plus 4 alpha y plus 4 alpha x this is less than 1 and this is obviously uh, without imposing any condition we are getting this. So, we can say that uh, implicit scheme is unconditionally stable, uh, we do not need to put any restriction on uh, del t uh, compared to del x, although uh, we need to use a small values of del t for this problems. Now, we can extend this uh, approach for crank nicholson scheme and we can check the numerical stability of the crank nicholson 
scheme. Thank you.